Just a quick one here, guys, asking the questions the BBC, ITV and the rest of them should have been asking months ago, because let's be honest, they all knew about this in advance. This latest story makes me question even more the information being fed to the PM, because it seems there is at least one blatant conflict of interest among SAGE, and when there is one, there is usually more. And this conflict of interest is right at the top, with the smarmy tosspot who comes out delivering the doom and gloom that scares people into listening to them. It turns out Chief Science Advisor Sir Patrick Patrick Valance was previously the president of GlaxoSmithKline, who is currently racing to make a vaccine which he still holds shares for that mature in April 2021. Coincidentally, that is just a month after the six months restrictions end that we have just been placed under and are limitless in scope, as I've said before. Now, he even spoke out about one being available by the end of the year the other day, without telling the public he has a vested interest in one of the companies trying to produce it. This, in my opinion, and the opinion of many others, is incredible and should lead to serious investigations into the interests of anyone making decisions on this or giving the government advice, since as we all know, anyone who gives the government advice is supposed to be completely impartial. Now of course I have to say he could be doing nothing wrong, but to say it looks suspicious is an understatement to me, and should spur the media into investigating it, but I wouldn't hold your breath on that. Apparently, a few newspapers have been looking into it, so we will take a look at what the Daily Mail has to say. It headlines, Conflict of Interest Row. As it emerges, Chief Scientific Officer Sir Patrick Valance has £600,000 of shares in vaccine maker contracted to make UK's coronavirus jab. Sir Patrick Valance has a £600,000 shareholding in a pharmaceutical giant which is racing to develop a COVID vaccine for the government, a report has revealed. The Chief Scientific Advisor holds a deferred bonus of over 43,000 shares in Glass. Smith GlaxoSmithKline from his time as president of the multinational company. Sir Patrick has already sold more than 5 million of his shares he received during his tenure from 2012 to 2018 when he was appointed by the government because obviously he has to. Accounts seen by the Telegraph show that Patrick held 404,201 GSK shares when he resigned worth 6.1 million at today's price. Sir Patrick, who also chairs the government's expert panel on vaccines, predicted at a news conference this week that the first effective dose of a jab might become available on a limited basis by the end of the year. Which, I don't know about you, to me, stinks of conflicts of interest, considering he chairs the government's expert panel on this. GSK is one of more than 20 drug companies around the world in the race to provide the cure for the coronavirus, an achievement which would be colossally lucrative. Sir Patrick's former employer has deals with the British and US government to supply them with the coronavirus vaccine, subject to the terms in a final contract. A senior Conservative MP and ex-Cabinet Minister told The Telegraph that Sir Patrick should have declared his stake in GSK. The policy of this government is to try and suppress COVID at every opportunity until we get a vaccine, the MP said. That makes it more likely that a vaccine will be prioritised by the government and he happens to be holding shares in one of the leading companies that are developing it. It is a potential conflict of interest. If he is making decisions on vaccines and advising the government on them, then he needs to divest himself of the shares or make a declaration every time he touches on the subject. In the Commons, every time an MP raises an issue in which they have a registered interest, they have to declare it. Every time he is talking about vaccines or on TV, he should put it on the table. Which I 100% agree with and I'm sure every single one of you do. This should not be a controversial thing at the end of the day. And I expect less people would be up in arms about it right now if he had actually declared it. But the fact that the public were not told about this at any point until now is slightly suspicious. I think you would all agree. It continues, it was unclear if Sir Patrick did in fact declare his interest at any stage. Mail Online has contacted him seeking clarification. Yes, he might have declared it to other people, but he's given information to the public at the end of the day. He should be declaring it to them, as should anyone else who has any interest outside of what they are doing for the government. The government said that Sir Patrick holds a deferred share bonus, which will mature in around April 2021, but declined to comment on the size of the holding or its value. Because in all honesty, the size of the holding or its value doesn't matter, the fact that it's there is the problem that people are going to have, and possibly rightly so. Because as I've said already, it certainly looks suspicious in my eyes, but I'm no expert, I don't know fully what's going on, I'm just basing it off the information that we are given. A spokesman told Mail Online, upon his appointment, appropriate steps were taken to manage the government's chief scientific advisor's interests in line with the advice provided at the time. The GCSA has no input into contractual and commercial decisions on vaccine procurement, which are taken by by ministers following a robust cross-government approval regime. 
Which is good to know, but let's be honest, the government has hardly been open and transparent with what they are doing, instead taking knee-jerk reactions to stupid shit. Sources said Mr. Valance sold his shares in GSK either before starting his role or after a legal mandatory holding period, and he now only holds a deferred bonus which is a matter of public record and matures in April 2021. Sources added that the appropriate controls are in place to manage any conflicts of interest, but questions need to be asked about why none of this information was provided to the public every time he was paraded on TV trying to tell people what they should and shouldn't be doing based on what they claim is the science when it actually turns out it's more likely their predictions. Now obviously, like I said already, this doesn't necessarily mean that Sir Patrick Valance has actually done anything wrong. It is a bit fucking stupid that he hasn't announced this to the rest of the country, and also questions need to be asked of the the government as to why they haven't been telling people what interests the SAGE committee might actually have. This is certainly a bit suspicious in my eyes, and what is more suspicious is that the BBC and the rest of the mainstream media, with the exception of a few newspapers, have completely ignored it. This was first reported in the early hours of today. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>